<laughs> First, I would like to thank uh, Professor Yale Tan. Actually, he took on the student who could barely speak any English at that time. And you can hear many stories from him about me at that time as well. And then I would like to thank other HPS research group members, especially Robert Hall and Mike Buckler, who gave me a lot of explosive feedback during this piece of research. Um, also, some industry friends, uh, Mike Chabonneau, on the scales, and Mitch Elsa, uh, for their input and support during early stage of this research. Um, actually, this piece of work was happening during the time when the problem was looking for a solution. Um, we started this uh, research when we were working on showing the instruction level parallelism was greater than two uh, during the summer internship at Motorola 88120 led by Mike Chabonneau at that time. And first we started assuming perfect branch prediction and we showed the instruction level parallelism was in the thousands or, um, but then once we modeled the realistic branch predictor given the best known method at that time, the, the parallelism dropped down to below 10 quickly. So we started looking for a better algorithm and the idea of two-level adaptive French prediction came into shape in the winter of uh, 1990, and we published the first set of results uh, during the industrial affiliation program called Proxy in, Mich in Michigan at that time. And just happened that a couple of Intel engineers uh, in the audience picked up the idea and used that algorithm in their P6 design project at that time, also known as Pentium Pro, and the base of many subsequent microprocessor Intel design. That's probably the reason why we are here. Uh, last but not the least, I would like to thank all the committee members and all of you for giving me this award. Thank you. I'd like to add uh, uh, two things. Uh, the first thing I want to add has absolutely nothing to do with branch prediction or the award. And that is that here we're gathered this award ceremony it's appropriate to uh, mention and reflect on one member of our community who is not here uh, today, Stomatis Vasiliadis, uh, top inventor at IBM, took the endowed chair position at the Technical University of Delft, and uh, passed away in April. He was a giant in computer architecture, but more importantly, he was a human who nurtured the younger people and I can't let the opportunity go without mentioning Stomatis. Uh, those of you who know him understand completely uh, that uh, it's important that we reflect on his contributions, uh, both as a computer architect and as a human being. So that's the first thing I want to say. The second thing I want to say is to add to what Sayu said uh, about the branch predictor and the environment at the time uh, when we came up with the branch predictor. Uh, because I think it's important today, because that time is here again. Uh, by, by that I mean that in 1990, uh, people were claiming that uh, IPC upper bound on IPC was less than two. You just can't get better than two. Uh, the, uh, it's the naysayers who put a ceiling on our creativity. And we published uh, a paper in this conference in 1991 saying that IPC can be better than two. And then the branch predictor uh, came along and uh, gave birth to a lot of research done by a lot of people uh, um, uh, that built on uh, the two-level branch predictor. Uh, McFarlane came in, came in with G-Shear shortly thereafter. Mark Evers and others came in with hybrid branch predictors. Uh, today, uh, our two-level branch predictor is nothing compared to uh, uh, the work that Cessnick, for example, is doing with the OGH uh, L predictor. So it gave birth to an area that proved that the ceiling wasn't there. Today we're doing the same thing. It's a, the ceiling is there. Uh, anything worth doing has already been done. It's uh, absolutely not the case. 
We're in an important place in the spectrum of computing. We're in the middle. We have problems at the top. We have process technology at the bottom. The process technology is giving us over a billion transistors in a chip. It's going to be 10 billion soon. Frequencies above 10 gigahertz. How do we harness that technology that can to keep producing uh, better and better results. Lots of places we can work. Uh, Britton Smith's keynote in the uh, uh, Operating Systems and Architecture Conference Sunday morning talked about all the things, paying attention to what the operating system uh, can do. Looking at what the algorithms need. Uh, we're already at the point where we've seen the interplay between compilers and microarchitecture. I say we've scratched the surface and what I'd like to do is, rather than say, hey, there's a ceiling, we can't do any more, say no. The ceiling is so far up there, that uh, so, so high above us, that uh, our engineering creativity should not be hampered at all. And I encourage particularly the students in the audience to uh, think big, take large bites, don't get caught in this trap of with a billion transistors, well, I'll just do multi-core with boring little tweaks of multi-core. No, there's much more out there that you can do, and I invite you to do it.